Bishop on Fridays, I'm Al McCauley, and every February 2nd, the Catholic Church celebrates a great feast day called Candle Mass, and it's a day that Catholics around the world will still bring candles to church to be blessed, candles that they will use throughout the year. Now, obviously, in days pre-electricity, this took on a greater urgency and a greater importance because candles were the only source of light in houses, and so the blessing of those candles really signified the blessing of the household. And of course, candles represent Christ, right? The light of the world. And so um, the idea of this sacramental, of having these blessed candles in the homes, lighting everything that you see was really profound. And it wasn't lost on those people. Again, today with electricity, we kind of lose that. And we have candles more for decorative purposes. But it's still a very important feast day because it reminds us that um, of the time when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple for his presentation. That's ultimately what Candle Mass recalls for us, the presentation of Jesus in the temple and the, the purification of Mary after having given birth to Jesus. So it's a very important feast day in that regard. In fact, a long time ago, February 2nd used to be the end of the official end of the Christmas liturgical season. Um, we don't really look at that anymore. We might look at that with the baptism of Jesus now, um, but, but, the, but it's still very important and, and tied clearly tied to the birth of Christ. Now, what's interesting about this is how it undergirds something that we all know in our day and age in a cultural way in our society. February 2nd is Candle Mass Day, and it's also Groundhog Day, which, by the way, just as an aside, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's just, it's really, really good on a lot of levels. But anyway, I digress. Groundhog Day is interesting because it really had, that feast of Groundhog Day has its roots in an old Celtic feast called Imbolc, which was basically a way to welcome spring. February 2nd is reason to be kind of right in the middle of the um, winter solstice and the spring equinox. And so it's marking the, the coming out of the winter and death into new life and into spring. And so it was a, a very important feast day for the agricultural world, as you can imagine, who really depends on weather for their sustenance, for their living. And so what was happening is it was said that if it was a sunny day, if it was a sunny day on February 2nd, that it predicted more winter, six more weeks of, of cold and snow. And you might say, well, that doesn't, that seems counterintuitive. If it's a sunny day, it's a nice day. Why would that do it? It's because everything casts a shadow on, in, on a sunny day. And so the shadow means that we are going to be living in darkness. We're going to live in more cold and more death, uh, if you will, uh, figuratively speaking. And so what happened was when farmers would look out you know, from their from their homes, they would see animals that would burrow in the ground and they would come out at the beginning of the day and uh, things like hedgehogs and they would see the shadow of the hedgehog and they'd say, well, it's a sunny day. We have six more weeks of, of cold and snow. If it was a, a really overcast day and the hedgehog came out, they would not see a shadow and they would say, well, we're going to have a, a an early spring. A nicer weather is on the way. Now, that imagine how that transfers to our time. These immigrants from Europe, Central and Northern Europe, places like Germany, would come and they'd settle. In particular, we know the Pennsylvania Dutch, right? Deutsch, the Germans. And they didn't have hedgehogs around, but boy, they certainly had groundhogs. And so it wasn't a, uh, didn't take long for them to look at the groundhogs. And when they came out of their burrows to see their shadow or not see their shadow would be an indicator of you know, what the weather might be like. So that's where it comes from. The whole idea of Groundhog Day and Pucks Tawny Phil and all that kind of thing, which again is in, you know, uh, Pennsylvania, that whole idea comes from this, this European idea of trying to see your shadow as an indicator of, of the weather. Um, by the way, um, and when I researched for this, I find out that the National Weather Service has said that Puxatawney Phil and other groundhogs in the country are roughly less than 40% accurate. So I don't know how that measures up with the, the weather forecasters you watch on your TV news program, but um, I don't know. 40%, a little less than 40% isn't that accurate. But anyway, all of that, Groundhog Day, in bulk, all of that, February 2nd, points back to, all the way back to the earliest days of Christianity and the presentation of Jesus in the temple and the reminder that he is the light in our world and we are called to be lights in the world of darkness uh, in the same way. That's what it means to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, a follower of that light. Which is why, by the way, we give candles at baptisms, because we re are reminded of taking that light of Christ into us so that we can share it with others. So, February 2nd. I hope you have a great Groundhog's Day, but I hope more than that, you remember to be 
the light of Christ to others in your little corner of the world. I appreciate you watching. If you'd like to share this information, please feel free to do so. We'd love it if you would keep tuning in every Friday for Fish on Fridays. Uh, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook, leave a comment in either of those places. That would be wonderful. But until next time, be good to each other and God bless. Mm -hmm.